Can I get a quick show of applause if you hate math? All right, talking to the right crowd. And I completely understand why, guys. I mean, what happens in math class? We're given, do numbers one through 93, all the odds. Study your butt off for this test that you're just gonna forget about it tomorrow. And the reward of math class is a letter. Like in chemistry, we get to see the reaction and the smoke going up. And in English class, we get a poem or a story in the end. And it's terrible, unmotivated. But mathematicians, they sought to fix this with the word problem. I mean, how much more motivating could it be than be like, uh, given that Albuquerque and Phoenix are 392 miles apart, if a train leaves Albuquerque going 55 miles an hour, one leaves Phoenix going 85, when will they cross each other if Joe Arpaio stops the Phoenix train every 10 minutes? That's not the point. We're not teaching the frame of mind the way that mathematicians look at the world, the way that we live our lives. I got a little ahead, and you guys are awesome, by the way. <laughs> Math is this wonderful way to give form to beautiful things. I mean, right in front of you right now is a fractal. It's very simple math to understand, and we find this in nature all over the place. It's great. So what happens really? We love science, and over here we've got the social scientists, and they're doing their thing, but they're borrowing from the biologists, you know, and the biologists, they're really doing some applied chemistry. Physics is over here. What we don't see is way over here, there's a mathematician, and he's giving them all the different things to think about. And we like science, because, you know, we experience the world around us. We conjecture on what's going on, and deduce what would happen if we're wrong, and test and test and test to see if we're wrong. But mathematicians, we have our own method. We create a universe, we experience something, and we make an abstraction. And we prove everything we can in that little abstract world. And then we generalize. We make our abstract world bigger and bigger and bigger. And hopefully what we can do is encompass all sorts of fields, some that you would, oh yeah, of course, engineering uses math, neurophysiology maybe, urban planning, lots of math in there. Um, figuring out a tip, that's more arithmetic, but whatever, you know, I put it on there. <laughs> One example where this abstraction works perfectly is the Konigsberg Bridge problem. I like to think of it as a gentleman's bet made over a beer in the 1700s. Basically, if you start anywhere, can you cross every bridge once and wind up back where you started? Do a pub crawl. The way to do that correctly to prove, make every landmass a dot, make every bridge a line, which got a little messed up, but whatever. And you invented graph theory. Thank you, Euler. And you can prove on something like this that it's impossible. Prove it. You don't have to try everyone. Another example is of cultural norms. This is kind of new in anthropology. It's 30 years old. Um, and so what the idea is, can you give a survey to a group and tease out that cultural norm mathematically? So the abstraction that we do is basically, we assume, this is my scary math slide, <laughs> We assume there's a higher truth that people answer from, and that's filtered from some sort of subcultures. And then as an individual in that culture, you either knew the answer, or if you didn't, you guessed. That's what this is. And I optimized that. So how this has been used is some of my colleagues went to MATLAB Bangladesh and interviewed people on the causes and preventions with postpartum hemorrhaging. They asked medically trained, traditionally trained, and lay women. And what they found was that medically and traditionally trained subcultures had very fixed ideas of what caused it and how to treat it. And the lay women were all over the place. And so if you want to invest money into helping this problem in developing countries, you would talk to the common woman, teach her what's correct. Another quick example is on the spread of fat stigma. Turns out America's been sharing our opinions of fat with the whole world. So not only are we gonna give you McDonald's, but we'll teach you, teach you to hate yourself for eating it. It's fantastic. This is from India. Here's another scary math slide real quick. I've got a viscosity, a distance, velocity, radius, time. That P right there is pressure. What could this possibly be that's interesting enough for me to share with you all? Why, it's the pressures produced when penguins poop. I study in avian defecation. The scientists wanted a mathematical description for the pressures that were inside these penguins' bodies when they shot poo 40 centimeters away. The penguin's like this big. I'm not gonna get into more of like what that would be in proportion. So my call to action to you guys, find something that's cool, find something that excites you and email that scientist. This happened to me recently and I'll tell you what, my ego, my head was like this big. 
Ask them how they thought about the world. Ask them about the computations they used. And you'll find out how much math, because we're really approachable people, and we're fun. You guys have been fun. Thank you.